Excellent. Good stuff. OK, so we'll get started. Yeah. Uh, OK, so just before we start, um, thanks for joining everybody. A few familiar names in, in there that I can see on the attendee list. So that's that's excellent. I uh, just let you know that the participant lines will be muted during the webinar. Um, that we're going to have a question and answer session at, at the end of the uh, webinar. Uh, and if you do have a question, then hopefully on your screen, you'll be able to see a, a little question uh, box where you can enter your question into them. We'll, we'll pick those up at the end um, of the webinar, I guess, with uh, the exception of those who may have just joined by phone, um, assuming there's, there's a, a way that we can get the questions off of everyone else. So if we could go to the next slide, please. So um, first of all, we just need to do uh, introductions, welcome in introduction. So I've obviously welcomed everyone. Um, I'm Brian Dobson. I am the chair of the Patient and Supporters Committee at Heart UK. Um, with us today, we we'll also have Amy Williams, who is a senior digital strategist at Hanover. Um, and Amy is going to talk to us about why social media is so important for charities and give us some uh, exam examples of successful campaigns um, and also some advice on best practice uh, hints and tips and we also have Simon Williams from Heart UK uh, no relation to Amy as far as I know um, and uh, Simon's going to uh, go through working with Heart UK with us and then we'll go on to the Q&A sessions. Uh, Jamie Flatty from Hanover is also present uh, in the room there in London. I'm uh, home in Maidenhead. Uh, I thought seeing as we're talking about uh, going digital and using social media, how better to demonstrate that than sitting in my own kitchen uh, and doing the webinar over my laptop. So uh, I think the next slide I'll hand over to you, Amy. Perfect. Thank you, Brian. So welcome, everybody. Um, as Brian mentioned, there is a questions um, box in the corner. So if for any reason anybody has any problems with the webinar, with the software um, or any of the slides not working, do send us a little question in the question box and we'll do our best to um, sort it out. So um, thank you so much for joining us. As Brian said, um, quite aptly, he's uh, joined from a kind of digital tool himself. So we're here to talk a little bit about social media for charities and for supporters such as yourself and how it can be um, a particularly powerful tool and how it um, can be used to support Heart UK specifically as well, um, which Simon will be able to do um, a little bit later on. So just to kick off, um, important to actually look at why we think that social media is important for charities, for supporters. So social media, if you are familiar with it or not, um, is a very powerful tool for engaging with your audience, um, particularly when that might be a disparate audience, um, whether that's geographically or demographically. So particularly for charities or kind of patient groups such as yourselves, we know that that, that can very much be the case, um, whether it's across the UK, whether it's globally for some charities, but also people of different age groups, of different kind of levels of social media use. So it's a great tool for that and, and bringing people together, um, which brings us on to our second point. Social media can bring communities together, um, particularly ones who are very engaged and active in the community, such as yourselves. Um, it's an opportunity for us to use the tool to bring people together for campaigning, for talking to one another and engaging with one another. Um, and so it's great for that. And then the voices of supporters of a charity, such as yourselves, um, trustees, um, people like that who are involved with the work that charities and people like Heart UK do, um, they're very authentic. It's a very powerful way to actually bolster the message of charities um, and the campaign that they do. Um, that's because it, you know, it really brings out that emotive side. It really kind of helps people talk about about how kind of you know the charity has either worked with them or how they work with the charity and kind of the real life effects that it has. Um, which is what makes social media important, but also what is important is that you yourselves as supporters um, and as kind of patients and part of the, the, the group know how to use social media effectively. Um, and as I said, everybody has different levels of understanding of different ways to use social media themselves. Um, but hopefully this session gives you an opportunity to learn a little bit about some of the tips and tricks that kind of we've built up over time around how kind of social media can be used most effectively. 
And then finally, as I was saying um, a minute ago, uh, the, the great thing about social media is that you can be really, really emotive with your content, and particularly for a charity, uh, you can really tap into the kind of patient experience, the emotions and the experiences that are related to um, you know, a, a cause like Heart UK are, are all about and like you are supporting. So it's a really strong tool for that. Um, and some of the content that you can create, which we'll, we'll talk about in a little while, um, really helps to kind of to make that um, kind of make those efforts come to life and really bring those those emotions to life. So social media not only kind of can be used effectively in a number of ways, but there are all sorts of different channels that you can use. Um, and I'm sure that you may be using some of them yourselves. There may be some that you've never really used or even heard of yourself. So we'll spend a little bit of time just walking through the different channels that there are, um, most of which Heart UK themselves use, which is obviously great. Um, some of which, you know, they might look to use in the future or you yourself might look to, to use in the future. But they all have different purposes, um, different focuses, actually different tone of voices um, and actually often very different audiences so that means that getting on these different social channels and utilizing them in, a, in kind of the right way uh, means that you can reach these different audiences and you can kind of share your messages in ways that are appropriate to them so part of that is about ensuring that the way that you use these channels you kind of have a different strategy as such for how you use them so it might be that what you're posting to Twitter is going to be different from what you're posting to Facebook so hopefully this little section will give you some ideas for how to use those in, in that way so to start with Twitter um, Twitter is really that kind of super powerful two-way engagement tool um, and particularly helpful at kind of building a community which is something that you as a kind of patient and supporters group yourself are already doing um, offline certainly um, and this is an opportunity to kind of bring it to life online um, and you'll often find that Twitter is, is the most kind of commonly used for charities for the exact reasons that we'll kind of go through in a minute uh, the tools and the features that it has. So content on these channels should be quite real time. It can be kind of breaking news style content. The timeline in Twitter moves so quickly. Um, I think the most recent stat was that kind of content on a timeline lasts no longer than about 18 minutes now. Um, and that's a, certainly a lot longer than our kind of attention spans. So realistically, Twitter is all about that short, that snappy content. Um, which is great when you kind of want to get lots of messages out there and you want to kind of really use the channel to to kind of you know engage with the audience in a fast-paced way. But Twitter also has some really exciting and useful features for charities, for supporters to utilize. Um, and a couple of those that, that you know are particularly useful and I know Heart UK have done a lot of themselves to date is first of all hashtags. So hashtags in particular um, and a little bit later we'll talk about some specific ones um, and specific some specific opportunities. But hashtags are a really really powerful way to join a wider conversation to go far beyond potentially your existing audience but also to kind of tap into relevant and, and uh, uh, real events that are happening that may not be specifically related to Heart UK's efforts but are really relevant for them so one of the ones that we'll mention a little bit later is National Cholesterol Month so obviously that is a great opportunity to talk about the things that Heart UK are doing and for you as a supporter to get involved in the different campaigns the other thing that is useful for this, another feature of Twitter, is tagging. And that's another opportunity to, again, spread your message a little wider, but also to notify somebody, potentially, if you're, if you're mentioning them or you want them to pay attention to what you're posting about. So, for example, if Heart UK wanted to engage, you know, another charity to join their campaigning efforts, then they might tag them in the post with a little at symbol and uh, draw to their attention that they're posting about them, um, which hopefully will um, encourage them to two-way engage with you to like your content to retweet your content and things like that so that's really all about boosting the reach of your content and um, finding opportunities to kind of go beyond your existing audience but actually to to join other kind of important efforts that are going on out there and overall twitter is a really good way to kind of drive an active and engaged community people to take action and actually a lot of people will use them to drive donations and that's something that we'll touch upon in a little while uh, when we talk about some of the successful campaigns so moving on to Facebook, um, Facebook may be a little bit more difficult to get cut through um, and this is purely due to the kind of algorithm of the channel but there are a number of ways that you can use the channel effectively 
And I think one of those really important things is video. So video is absolutely king for Facebook as a channel, and that is something that the algorithm really, um, really supports. So, you know, there's an opportunity to upload longer, emotive videos, ways to really show kind of, you know, your patient stories or your case studies or your activities in a way that, that really engages the audience and stops people kind of from scrolling through the feed but actually grabs their attention. And another thing that's quite new, um, and some of you might have used before, is Facebook Live, which is another opportunity to engage with your audience, actually in a way quite similar to this, where you can kind of talk face to face and have kind of sharing sessions like this, where you can talk about a cause or you can do a Q&A with patients or supporters. So lots of opportunity to utilize that as well. And as you can see, that's another example of Facebook using video in a way um, that, you know, they're, they're keen to keep pushing video in, in some form or other. So that's great. And moving on to a couple of others, um, and I'd like to caveat kind of here that these aren't, of course, the only social channels. There are others, and we will see a couple more of those pop up in the case studies. But these are some of the ones that are kind of most commonly used um, and absolutely the ones that Heart UK themselves have and are using. So we thought we'd go through these. Um, otherwise, we could have you here all night and we don't want to do that. So the only other ones to talk through at this stage are LinkedIn um, and Instagram. So just starting with LinkedIn briefly, LinkedIn is a very different channel from um, Facebook and Twitter, certainly. Um, and we've talked about different audiences, and I think LinkedIn is one of those key examples where the audience is very, very different. It's very much a professional channel, um, and sometimes you get people kind of saying that potentially social media, you know, LinkedIn isn't a social media channel, but it, it really is. It's it's developing more and more so to have two-way conversation, to engage with your network, but uh, that network is potentially more of a professional one, your business associates, people that you've worked with or people that you've engaged with in a more professional manner. However, that doesn't stop it being useful. Um, you can share content related to your support of Heart UK, some of the campaigns and efforts or thought leadership that you might have about a certain topic that's related to your work with Heart UK or the kind of wider healthcare space. Um, and that's an opportunity to, again, reach a different audience from Heart UK's own audience, perhaps from your own kind of personal audiences on your channels. It gives you an opportunity to, to reach a whole new group um, but again, with important and powerful content uh, that, you know, that goes beyond what you might have been able to do before. And finally, to wrap up on the kind of walking through social channels, uh, Instagram is another really popular channel, um, very much kind of going from strength to strength on a daily basis. Um, and particularly, it's a key channel for those younger audiences, although I think that's changing day by day and more and more people are adopting the channels. Um, and it's highly visual, which is a really nice other opportunity to take on. Uh, we've talked about video for Facebook, which is obviously incredibly powerful, but Instagram really brings to life the power of images, something that perhaps other channels don't do as, as much because they're focused more on the kind of words and the, and the hashtags. Um, but Instagram is really about grabbing people's attention with those images. And that's an opportunity to showcase other things. So it might be behind the scenes footage, it might be aspects of the work that you're doing with Heart UK, whether that's fundraising or the, you know, the events that you might go to to support the charity. It's, it's a really nice other opportunity to do that. But again, in the same way that Twitter is used, you can use hashtags to bring it all together under one kind of, you know, one umbrella or to join other wider conversations and find other people who are talking about the same things that you are and kind of drive that awareness amongst a, a really Age group. So it's another really, really powerful tool. It's another opportunity to unite a community around something, um, but just through a, a slightly different medium of, of imagery, which is um, which is great. And and with a kind of audience that are, that are struggling to stay engaged nowadays, I think images are a great way to do that. So another opportunity for you to use your social channels in that way. So one of the things that we wanted to do was just to give you a little bit of inspiration as well to go through some other campaigns that we've seen that use social media quite effectively. Um, but also, you know, so as you don't have to always reinvent the wheel, um, it's important that people can kind of take inspiration from one another, can see what's worked and what hasn't of course there's definitely lots of opportunities out there for you to find things that charities have done that doesn't work. Um, and that's fine as well. And I think that's an opportunity for everybody to keep learning. Um, but we wanted to share some really positive stuff with you at this stage and, and get you inspired about things that you might be able to do um, and just kind of get a feel for the sort of way that pe other people are using social media beyond Heart UK. So here's one that plenty of you might have seen um, and you might have seen some of these already. So um, hopefully some of them are new, but um, hopefully you'll enjoy hearing about them again. So the British Heart Foundation utilised Twitter in, in quite a savvy way. Um, 
recently by using this kind of like this tweet to see what happens next, which liking is such a kind of an everyday action on Twitter. People do it all the time. It's just a way to show that your engagement with a, with a tweet in the same way that you might as an everyday user. But they, you know, British Heart Foundation worked with Twitter, used their um, emojis, which again, free to use for everybody, really easy to kind of utilize. Um, and they worked with them to use this button to kind of restart a heart for their campaign. So kind of clicking on that like button really brought to life this tweet and kind of through a really simple imagery kind of way of bringing it to life, it was, it was just a way to utilize the platform's features without anything too expensive or too complicated. Um, and you can see some of the results on there. So over this one week period, there were 47,000 mentions and this kind of really big increase on their, on the general UK mentions of, of Restart Our Heart. So not only there can we see how they've used Twitter to kind of utilize their tools, but also to use a hashtag really, really effectively. Something which we've talked a lot about already and we'll continue to do throughout this presentation. Um, then next up, we've got a campaign from the South Tees Hospitals Foundation Trust, um, where they photographed real patients who were kind of having enough of a fight on their hands without having to fight flu. So this really was about using what they had um, in their own patients, their own community on social media. And again, going back to that kind of emotive piece that we've talked about, whereby they used a very simple hashtag of Flutober, and they basically used these images to get people to see that getting vaccinations was you know, going to build up that herd immunity. So very simple call to action. Um, and again, not very expensive, not very complicated, but really kind of bringing to life the emotive aspect of patients and their kind of real fights and real stories. So another really good example of the way that we might be able to do something like that. And then I did mention that a couple of other platforms might come up during this um, presentation. And so Snapchat, which we may not have talked through in much detail, um, and if anybody's got any questions, I'm sure you can ask it um, in the questions box later. But uh, NICE, uh, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, actually use Snapchat themselves in a kind of, in a bid to adopt with young, this kind of connection with young people. So again, that kind of thought about which channels is gonna reach your audience effectively. So they really wanted to just educate young people about drug resistance and the importance importance of simple hand washing. So a very, very simple cause, um, but something that they wanted to activate creatively. So they used snap facts, as they call them, um, using their Snapchat channel to kind of share idea, these information about, you know, drug resistance and the sorts of germs that um, hand washing can, can do. So really simple again they used a lot of pictures a lot of emojis all things that are readily available on the channel things that are very easy to use but again very engaging and things that kind of really brought the audience got them excited about the campaign and, and got them using the the kind of filters and and aspects of snapchat that, that get people kind of very excited about about what the channel does so it was very simple mechanism, very kind of user generated and very much relied on the kind of community to get involved and do that. So another great example of using patients and supporters communities to, to activate a campaign. And then just moving quickly on to um, the September campaign by Charity Water. Um, and this was just the kind of example of how social media can be a great word of mouth vehicle. So the campaign reached out to people born in September um, to invite friends and family to donate to charity water instead of buying gifts um, for them sort of on their birthday. So again, a really simple kind of idea, just a really great way to use social media because you've got such a big community out there and using kind of a couple of different hashtags that can go far beyond your audience. You start to bring all sorts of people involved and interested in your charity or your cause than perhaps would have been before. So um, that was an example of how they did that. And you can see the different visuals they use, the different results that they had in terms of bringing this campaign to life and, um, and with, a, you know, again, a very simple premise. And finally, uh, just to look at St. John's Ambulance, we wanted to look at a campaign that kind of did a little bit more traditional as well as kind of online fundraising um, and their use of social media. So the St. John's Ambulance campaign um, was a partnership with Tesco's whereby they launched a CPR baby grow. Um, so very much a kind of offline activity, um, which was all about kind of attempting to increase awareness of CPR and babies um, and teaching parents how to perform it. So something that you might be doing as an activity, whether it's fundraising or kind of campaigns such as this, the, they then transformed that into digital. So they had these existing assets in that they had the product, they had, you know, very 
common opportunities to take pictures of patients or babies using, you know, wearing this baby grow and turn them into really, really simple imagery with a little bit of text on it and a little bit more information. So again, an opportunity to take something offline, online, um, but again, really increase the efforts of the campaign that you're doing without having to kind of reinvent the wheel or do anything um, that's costly and time consuming um, beyond something you're already doing. So hopefully some of those campaign ideas have inspired you um, and got you thinking about things that you might be able to do or potentially kind of thinking about the future Heart UK campaigns that you might be able to partake in. Um, but we really wanted to kind of make sure that you have some practical kind of examples and tips to help you use social media in an effective way, whether that's kind of in your personal campaigning or as part of the kind of patient support group to, to support Heart UK. So hopefully these will kind of put that into action for you. So we've talked a lot about hashtags. Um, I'm sure you've heard me mention them quite a few times, but I think this is potentially um, arguably one of the kind of most important best practice tips out there around um, activating hashtags and subsequently often national kind of days, weeks, months or, or kind of opportunities like that. So it's a really effective way to campaign is to kind of tap into these international or national days. Um, and we talked about National Cholesterol Month, uh, which is coming up in October, so very soon. So a great opportunity to kind of activate what you're hopefully learning here. Um, and I know Simon might mention it um, himself briefly a little bit later on, but you know, there, there will always be a kind of hashtag set up by by whether it's a charity or a patient group for kind of a, a national day um, you can see them happening all the time on a daily basis um, nowadays and so joining this kind of wider hashtag this this wider awareness day gives you an opportunity to as we said earlier reach a bigger audience but also become part of a, a bigger cause so you know you can fight for your own causes for your own Kind of key messages and things like that but within this bigger picture um which is great so you know you can then continue particularly if it's a month um like national Festival month it gives you kind of a wealth of content to do throughout kind of 30 days of the of the of that month you can post something using that hashtag every day you're going to capture different people um throughout the month because different people will be online at different times so it's a really nice opportunity to kind of keep spreading your message in that way um, and the other thing that we've got here is just some other examples, so ways that Heart UK or yourself might be able to kind of tap into other relevant hashtags or relevant awareness days. One of the things that we wanted to talk about briefly when it comes to hashtags is that it's really important to be kind of agile with the way that you use hashtags. So as I said, there's almost always a kind of ready-made hashtag for a national day or a national week, month. Um, so, you know, National Cholesterol Month, uh, next month there's there's already a hashtag that we know about so things like that are will always exist but they do change and on, often you will see that on the day people have different iterations of them so it's really important to be agile with hashtags to look at what's trending or click on the you know the the official hashtag and see what other hashtags people are using because that's only another opportunity to spread your messages wider so it might be that actually you know on men's health month actually the hashtag is men's health 2018 or some people are using men's health 18 so there's so many opportunities for you to, to do that so it's important to be really kind of agile and jump on those different opportunities throughout the day rather than kind of setting your you know setting your plan early and then and then you know not looking back at other opportunities so um, that's really the beauty of hashtags that you can that you can activate so then just a couple of other best practice hints and tips, um, some of which you may have already kind of heard me uh, mention with the case studies, but using real patients um, is a really amazing opportunity for charities um, and particularly around a cause like health where people are very kind of passionate about those causes and, and kind of will really relate to emotive stories and, and kind of real life people. So, you know, tweeting quotes tweeting or posting case studies from real patients and real people whether that be their their story of, of you know the a condition or how they've been living with that or all their work with a charity so just kind of bringing it to a really emotive place where the audience can really connect with you and your story um, is much more powerful than something that's kind of not very personal or kind of very corporate so definitely something that you know hopefully you as the kind of patient and supporter committee can can help with and then engaging in conversation is really, really important, um, particularly on the channels like Twitter, where that is kind of the main aim of the channel. So it's important to remember that, you know, social media is a conversation. Um, nobody wants to exist in a vacuum whereby you kind of 
tweet or talk about yourself only and, and don't engage with others because you know that's that's kind of defeating the whole object so that's not just being active um, and responsive on social media but you know that's managing the community whether that's your own followers in your community or whether that's you know questions that you're seeing aimed at Heart UK that you feel that you kind of you know you can support what they're doing and things like that so it's really about engaging that two-way conversation um, and that applies to things like retweets as well and quote tweets and liking it you know it's another way to connect with other people in the community or other influencers or kind of uh, you know um, groups of people that you want to kind of engage with so it's a really great way to support a cause and it's a really great way for you to kind of you know continue to bolster the efforts of Heart UK and, and of your kind of your efforts as well. And then just moving on to the kind of way that you talk and the way that you speak on, on social media, I think it's really, really important to have a personality. Um, and that's something that we see increasingly for whether that be charities, whether that be brands or corporate companies, um, people have to stand out because once upon a time, social media was you know, something that only a few people did and now so many people do it that to use it effectively, you need to have a, a personality that stands out. So you don't want to be a faceless brand or a faceless charity um, and you want to kind of ensure that, that your personality comes through. And that's what is kind of great thing about being an individual yourself, um, kind of supporting a charity or supporting um, a cause online. You can kind of add your own personality and your own voice to that. Um, so, you know, there's there's so much less about sales and kind of things like that for, for a charity. And it's so much more about establishing this, those relationships and the kind of fundraising efforts. So that's that's a really important point around kind of having that, that different personality. Um, and that kind of brings us equally on to being positive. So it, it is really important to kind of convey the objectives of the charity with a kind of positive tone, um, but that also emphasizes things like, you know, actions that are really easy for people to, to take on. So whether that's donate or like or join us or something like that, but it, it's really about kind of positive messages and, and that's what gets people's attention more than anything. Um, and that also positive might be the type of content you use. So kind of eye grabbing images or heartwarming videos and kind of that storytelling should be at the core of kind of what you're doing. Um, and it's, as I said, kind of a great way to, to share the messages and, and the uh, kind of cause of Heart UK in a way that works across social media. And then just a few more things to kind of wrap up in terms of the best practice hints and tips. So uh, being genuine is, is one of the most important things on, on social media channels. And I think um, being transparent and genuine is, is increasingly important as people are more savvy to that and people want to see not just personality, but want to pe see people being transparent on social media and, and kind of not hiding away from anything. So that, that applies to both the content that you're creating and the sort of messages you're putting out there, but also the way that you engage with others. So, you know, not hiding behind anything, but, but sharing the information that you have and, and being open and transparent. Um, and equally kind of being transparent for you, being transparent about your kind of role as a supporter of Part UK and that you kind of choose to be a voice on their behalf and, and potentially even why you do that. And I think, again, that goes back to not just transparency and being genuine, but, but that kind of emotive and positive story, uh, which is you know great for Heart UK and, and hopefully great for you as well. And then finally, the power of user generated content. Um, and sorry for not putting that, that full wording on this slide, but one of the most powerful ways for you as supporters potentially to get involved um, is actually through user generated content and kind of, you know, anything that you create or anything that you post on your channels um, is exactly that. It's kind of content created by you as a user. Um, it's, truly, it's truly authentic because it, it's done by you yourself. Um, and it kind of, you know, it shows that you as a community are engaged um, and are campaigning kind of on the, on the behalf of a charity um, and it also helps to grab attention um, you know the community coming together supporters creating content on the behalf of a charity um, you know it's important at grabbing the attention of other potentially other supporters but also powerful figures you know such as the media or politicians um, and one of the things that kind of I always like to come back to for this is something like the ice bucket challenge that you might have seen or the smear for smear for campaign um, which were obviously both charity related campaigns um, and largely they were user generated themselves they kind of came from content that, that users across the world or across the UK kind of created and posted themselves um, and they're powerful because they they bring together the cause that, that is everybody wants to talk about but they were the sorts of things that capture the attention of media and, and of kind of powerful and influential people so I think opportunities like that are great and I think you know the more that you can work together as a community and with Heart UK to kind of do those things the better so um, you know a really powerful part of social media and, and kind of shows the freedom of the channels to, to do that yourself. 
So hopefully those examples, the kind of different channels, the best practice hints and tips are things that are really going to help you with kind of your communications efforts, your support of um, Heart UK. So thank you for listening to my section. Um, if you have any questions, as I said, please do pop them in the comment box or the questions box on the side. Um, but for now, I'll pass you back to Brian, who will kind of take us on to the next part of the presentation. Thank you, Amy. That, that was really interesting and really useful. I, I certainly learned quite a few bits in there that uh, will, will help me going forwards. So, Simon, we're over to you now uh, on working with Heart UK. Hey. That's it. Thank you very much. Cheers. So it's a bit of a shock to most of you now that it's me on this picture rather than Amy, yeah? <laughs> So I, it doesn't matter uh, who's there, it says Jamie Flaherty underneath anyway, well, he, <laughs> on our screen. He's, he's helping me uh, know which button to press, so that's quite handy. Uh, I wanted to talk uh, just very quickly because we've had a number of other examples of um, some social media campaigns of what Heart UK did last year. And because many of you online are already um, uh, were, were kind of part of this, I, I didn't want to dwell on it for too long. But it just kind of re-emphasizes the importance of what we've just heard around the power of hashtags and um, and how we uh, used um, Twitter in particular to galvanize a lot of support around um, the Find FH campaign, uh, which is going from strength to strength. And um, we uh, last year during National Cholesterol Month um, had a, 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 um, a, an event that we uh, on one particular day. Uh, visited Parliament and uh, brought attention um, on that particular day to uh, to FH and uh, came up with the uh, the hashtag here. I think I've got these wrong way around of um, of hashtag find FH and we used the hashtag um, on Twitter, but also on um, our, you know using um, uh, find FH on on Facebook. But how we've uh, integrated find FH into um, other channels. Um, so we created banners, we've created um, Find FH to, to obviously as a charity to help us um, gather some fundraising uh, activities. We're also um, creating a new website for um, the nice guidelines around uh, around FH. So I've called that findfh.org.uk. So you'll see how that kind of theme uh, goes throughout and um, clearly anything that we um, make reference to uh, 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 on uh, about FH has that hashtag at the end of it. Find FH, um, and we also um, had a uh, a thunderclap, which is something quite new. Uh, we uh, this evening in that we um, on one particular day, on at one particular moment, you kind of save up all of your tweets and your Facebook posts, and we try and gather as much support for. Uh, behind this uh, uh, thunderclap. So um, at that one particular moment, everybody that signed up to it uh, sends this one message out and that goes out to all of their friends and supporters and, and everybody that they have uh, contact with um, at that one particular time. And the, uh, the reach is quite incredible. Um, if you consider, you know, who your friends with, who their friends are, and who their friends are and if everybody was to like or retweet or make comment um, people see a particular statement in this case around FH that then is seen by many many thousands of people um, at, you know, in a very short period of time and uh, it's, it's a very effective way of getting a statement or a message across and of course with National Cholesterol Month coming up next week uh, next um, what well, is next week next month uh, throughout October and having the hashtag NCM Heart UK uh, uh, and clearly we'll be doing a lot of uh, social media activities you'll be seeing the hash that hashtag and uh, those of you that are on Twitter um, certainly on on Facebook you know we'll see the stuff that we're we're coming out with and um, last year uh, we did a uh, recipe of the day and um, Jamie Oliver um, um, at the same time was doing something along recipes of particular days so uh, we wrote on the back of his hashtag and uh, and and, uh, and used his um, 
social media following to gather support for our um, recipes of the day that we tweeted out. So again, it's using uh, other people to um, um, uh, to gather support and, and kind of galvanise a, a clearer message. So look out for all the stuff on um, social media throughout National Cholesterol Month next um, uh, next month, and certainly get involved in the uh, Great Cholesterol Challenge and show the support to uh, the folk that are. Thanks, Brian. So that's my lot. Super. Thank you, Simon. Mm -hmm. Okay, good stuff. So it's it's question uh, and answer time now. Um, so I'm not quite sure if we've had any questions come in, Jamie. I know I, I did put one in, but I, I don't know whether you picked that up or not. Can you guys still hear me in London? Yeah. We can still hear you. Yeah. Just read okay, the stuff. questions that have come through. Okay. Sorry. Right. Should we go for this one? Okay. So we've had one that come through um, asking around the difference between impressions and engagements on Twitter, uh, which is a great question. Um, so if you are using your Twitter and kind of looking at those things um, on the platform to, to get a feel for how well your content's performing, then kind of the difference between impressions um, and engagements are kind of simply put impressions are who is kind of potentially seeing your content. So the amount of people that, that your content has been served to in their timelines. Um, but then the most important thing really is that the difference between engagements um, is somebody that's chosen to stop, look at that content and then take an action, which is obviously for kind of charity and campaigning content, one of the important things that we want to see come of that. So in particular, you might find that if you're looking at your social media content, you might be seeing the engagement rate um, and the engagement rate in particular decides whether or not you have kind of had a good amount of engagements against the amount of impressions that you've had. So something you really want to, to take a look at, but absolutely kind of impressions, the people that could see it and then engagements, the people that have chosen to kind of to take an action um, to that to that post that they've seen. And then just another question that we've had come in, um, somebody's asking around photo content, um, whether adding that to tweets or, or partic yeah, particularly tweets by the looks helps improve your impressions and engagement. So uh, my answer to that would be yes, absolutely. So um, kind of visual content and engaging content like videos um, and images is, is absolutely likely to improve your, your impressions and engagements particularly, I think what you'll get is um, on something like Facebook in particular and, and on Twitter very much so, it stops people in the feed um, and is more likely to kind of grab their attention um, and you do see a kind of marked improvement in your engagements in particular from, from visual content. So actually people taking that action, which is what you kind of really want them to do. And can I still make a difference with very few followers? Again, um, the answer is always yes. Um, I think worrying about followers is is not always the kind of best use of, of your of your time. Um, what is important about followers, firstly, is is probably the quality of your followers. So, you know, a thousand followers um, who you know are not engaged or not interested in in what you're talking about um, are far less powerful than you know ten or twenty followers who are really engaged with what you have to say. So, absolutely, um, first of all, not having many followers. Is, is not an issue in terms of you know if you can get them engaged with what you're saying then great um, but as Simon was mentioning a little bit um, and um, myself with the with the presentation earlier there's so many things that Think that Twitter, for example, can help you do. Um, so the use of hashtags uh, goes far beyond your own followers because it's reaching um, anybody that kind of clicks on the hashtag or is following that conversation. So there's an opportunity for you to reach people regardless of how many followers you have um, if you use some of the kind of the, the tools that Twitter allows you to use like hashtags. And I think... Okay, thank you, Amy. I, I did put something in there earlier just about um, the dates of uh, that, that you put up on the screen and should we look at sort of sending 
invites out Simon or reminders, or we could just use the Facebook page um, just to make sure we've got all the ambassadors engaged on that, on those key days. Is it these key, oh, I lost it now. Which one's the key date slide? So we're just gonna bring that slide back up to... Yeah, it was slide this 14. One. This one? Uh, yeah, that's the one, thank you. Yeah. So, what, what, sorry, Brian, what are you asking me to do? Um, well, just whether we should send reminders to the ambassadors or just make sure we've got these listed out somewhere so then we can pop them onto the uh, maybe the ambassador page to get everybody out tweeting and okay. posting yeah. messages, etc. Because yeah. otherwise, you know, these, these days could pass and if we don't do anything, we're missing opportunities. Of course, of course, of course. yeah. Uh, well, and I, I'd hope everyone knows about National Classroom Month. <laughs> um, well, the that, interesting. That, Go on, sorry. Well, no, one of the questions you're... that's come through here was for me: Will Heart UK have uh, content we can share during National Classroom Month? Uh, yes, absolutely, and uh, particularly around the Great Classroom Challenge. So, when folk are doing all of the activities um, throughout the month, either um, running, um, rowing, uh, walking, that hundred mile challenge. Um, we're very much encouraging them to send in photographs of them doing that and uh, and, and and everything that um, you know is related to um, to the Great Cholesterol Challenge and National Cholesterol Month. We'll be retweeting and um, reposting everything that comes through from um, followers, but uh, certainly we will have content ourselves um, that uh, um, folk could be. Um, well, I'd be very delighted if folk could uh, repost and re retweet. And again, you know, because it's it, it, you, you may well have that um, low number of followers, um, but your followers have got followers and your followers have got followers. And, you know, somebody out there, as with that um, thunderclap, you know, it's uh, a bit like a pyramid and, you, you know, you, you eventually do reach uh, potentially an awful lot of people um, without necessarily realising. Um, and if you can ride on the back of um, hashtags that, um, you know, we've looked into around um, National Cholesterol Month or Find FH, then, um, you know, ideally we can get that awareness of the month, uh, awareness of FH and any other cause that we might be campaigning on out in social media. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's very important, it's very powerful. You know, journalists look at it, uh, it you know, it, it can set the news, uh, politicians, um, use of uh, social media an awful lot, and uh, certainly in uh, in our activities with um, with politicians, we um, you know, take advantage of of um, uh, any opportunity to to engage with them on social media, and you know I'd encourage everybody else similarly to do so. Thank you, Simon. Um, and a little bit of a controversial this one, this, but on Monday it's FH Awareness Day. Is Heart UK going to be supporting that, or yes, certainly. certainly. I mean, we'll be doing something around uh, Find FH, and uh, and again, if anybody else wants to do anything, we can. Um, you know, the more, the merrier. Super. And, and what do we think is going to be our feed from Heart UK to the ambassadors? Are we going to go through the Facebook site or Twitter or something else? Emails? Well, different folk have got different mediums, really. I, I must, Heart yeah. UK is um, uh, more Facebook and Twitter. Um, Instagram's more visual and perhaps our messages are more um, uh, uh, less visual and, and, and more, you know, kind of written. Um, but who knows when, uh, you know, when we start to expand uh, at our UK and take on uh, um, more skills What and with the new website coming out, we might, may well move more visual. And um, But certainly for the moment, Twitter or Facebook, both are good. Uh, both are good for me. I, you know, I wouldn't um, uh, discriminate against one medium over the other. Yeah, I think I didn't really explain myself there, sorry. Um, so what I meant was where, where, where there's going to be, you know, there's, there's certain events, uh, you know, articles come out in the press uh, yeah. or from, from health. How are you going to feed those into the ambassadors so that we then can go out and share this sort of content and support? Um, well, I, I, again, if it's a, a news one, I could do, um, 
you know, if Facebook, it, it's a bit difficult to answer, right? It's a bit horses for courses, really. Um, yeah, if, sure. if, if a, a, you know, if it's got a link, then maybe a, uh, a Facebook, um, because the story will come up more as a, you know, in its, uh, in its entirety. If it's, um, you know, if it's a, if it's a, a tweet by a news uh, outlet, then, you know, it'd be a retweet of that. Um, uh, you know, I'll, tr I'll try and do both. Um, but, you know, some people are on Facebook and not on Twitter and vice versa. Sure. Thank you. And are we going to do the thunderclap thing again? Um, I'm up for it, uh, but I, um, I'm on my own. So if uh, we are up for it, then <laughs> a volunteer uh, that can help me would be uh, most gratefully uh, uh, welcomed. OK, you and I can discuss that so I understand a bit more about what's required and we'll <laughs> see what we can do. Um, the, the only other th thing that I wanted to mention was, um, and this is definitely a thing on Facebook, but just be aware of your settings in regards to your social yeah. media, because there's no point trying to share something, um, but you can only share it with your direct contacts and friends. And then if someone tries to go for share further, then it doesn't work. So just be aware of that. Hopefully that made sense. Yeah, no, very good point about the privacy. And conversely, if you know, you may not want people to know certain aspects of your uh, Facebook page, uh, which these days you can block off access to um, to public's viewing. So you can still get that message out there without feeling um, exposed or or that people are prying into, you know, your photographs or your um, you know, your, your family album and, and so on you can you can lock those bits privately away from um any posts that you might put out for uh, for the public and you know for campaigning purposes and of course on twitter there's less um less uh, requests for that that sort of personal information anyway okay thank you uh, do we have any other questions that have come through no no i think we're good OK, so um, we're all done, I assume. Just check with everyone there in Hanover. We're Before good. I close things off. We're yeah, OK, okay good. good. Super. OK, in that case, I will thank everybody for joining. I hope that's been of value. It certainly was to me. Um, and I look forward to working with you all uh, going ahead and uh, raising the profile and awareness of, of Heart UK. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian.